I'm expecting good things from Tottenham. Talk about Dominic Solanke joining Tottenham. We talked a lot about a little bit about this on yesterday's show. Um, but uh, overall, I think uh, this is a very good signing for um, for Tottenham. Um, and the fact that you know it was a team that had a clear need at that striker position, someone that can go in and get. 20 plus goals for a legit team because I think him being able to get 19 goals out of Bournemouth with the amount of crosses um, uh, 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 Tottenham play in, how high energetic, high attack pacing sort of football, the chances that they create, the amount of attacking opportunities they find themselves in. Having a striker like Dominic Solanke, that's the really, that's a really good, that's a really good balance of uh, physicality, that physical in nature to him. Um, um, being 6'2", being a little bit more muscular, beefy, um, with the combination of just pure ability, pure technical skills, build ability, play in tight spaces. Uh, I think he's a really good player, Dominic Solanke. And I think him going to a club like Tottenham can make Tottenham um, a little bit, you know, alarming. I think Tottenham has improved. This, You know, Tottenham are a better team right now than they were last week, and that's because of a signing like Dominic Solanke. Um and they got it for reasonable bargain, uh, uh, reasonable bargain in my uh, opinion. You know, this is a guy in Dominic Solanke that you know has scored nineteen goals in the Premier League last season, um, aged twenty eight year or aged. Let's do the fact check real quick. I believe he was twenty eight. 26 years old, okay, age 26 years old, scored 19 goals this past season, um, and he did it in the Premier League, so he's already Premier League proven, and also in the fact that, you know, he's an English player that adds to it, so he, you know, 65 million euros, you know, uh, initially 55 million with 10 million add-ons, uh, no, I believe that's uh, pounds, actually, yeah, 65 million pounds, um, which is 55 million initially with 10 million add-ons. Look, you know, could you argue, is he a 65 million dollar player? Uh, I don't know. But in the fact that he's Premier League proven already, he's an English player, don't think there's a relatively crazy deal. You know, this is a Dominic Solanke that really put a push in for that England, um, to get into the England squad. Um, Ali Watkins and Ivan Tony were able to get in ahead of him, but he put in a good push and it was based on the solid season he had this season. Um, so I think he can make Tottenham alarming because, you know, what they needed was that clinical sort of finisher. Richarlison, he did not provide that, you know, he doesn't score enough goals and he's not consistent enough in front of goal, um, to be that sort of player. Richarlison, he, you know, he could be, you know, he's, he has some pace, he has some ability, he can, you know, he's lively in dangerous areas, but overall, Dominic Solan. Solanke is just a better striker and is more of a natural, pure natural striker. And I think Andre Postacoglu can really thrive with this. And it makes them unique, unique, unique. Now Tottenham, um, you know, is you know their their attack is actually there's some quality and there's some depth too. There's plenty of options with Dominic Solankai uh, Solankai, Solanke, Richarlison, Son, Kolishevsky. Uh, there's some real, real uh, players in this team um, that can, you know, you know, make them deadly. I think Dejan Kuliszewski, Son, and, and Dominic Solanka, Solanki is a brilliant front three. And having the likes of a guy like Richarlison that can come off the bench and be a factor for them, um, you know, that's a very good attack. You also have the likes of James Madison who want to pick up the good form that he had last season, especially early on, playing behind them, creating the opportunities for them, you know? Again, that's... You're seeing the little bit of the triangle that he's going to build. We've seen Andrea Postacoglu, how he wants to play with this Tottenham team. He wants this team forward going. He wants this team with the, being able to create a lot of chances, being very, very open. He's, he's very, very 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 stubborn in terms of how they play and that's in a good way because managers the great managers they don't go to plan b's they want to make plan a better even when they went down to nine men against chelsea that one day at uh, at the tandem hotspur stadium even when they were down to nine men 
the, the, the defense line was still right up on the halfway line and they were still going forward they were still pressing high they were still playing that sort of football they ended up getting burnt by Chelsea eventually because you can't play that way with nine men but it's just the philosophy that Andy Postacoglu has he has the way that he wants to play he wants the way that his team wants to look and he wants his team to be very open he wants his team to be very aggressive very um, very attack minded um, and he wants to go for it and and now they're, so, they're building that sort of team that has the quality to really make another team pay whenever Tottenham are able to create this amount of chances. And defensively, you know, you have Van de Ven who has pace. Um, the goalkeeper situation, we know with Vicario, they've solved that. He's been really, really good um, for them. Pedro Porro and Destiny Udogi they've been are two solid fullbacks that I think are going to continue to improve as they get more Premier League and Premier League experience. And then Van de Ven. And Christian, Christian Romero, I think is a very, very, very good center back partnership. So overall, I think the starting eleven is really good um, with this team. Um, I think they could buff up a little bit the midfield. They were able to sign Archie Gray, who had a very good season for um, who had a very good season for uh, Leeds in the um, in the championship. Uh, he was very, very good for them. Had a very, very good uh, season. Um, um, playing 52 games for uh, for Leeds. But how can, you know, how can he translate that into the Premier League? You know, he's only 18 years old. Can he be a factor for Tottenham? Uh, can he be a factor for Tottenham right away? You know? But he's been really good in preseason. Another midfielder that they were signed that's been pretty good in mid, uh, in preseason was Lucas Bergvalli, the the Swedish player. They were um, the Swedish eighteen year old, another young player, another player sort of for the future. They were able to sign him from Dujer Dujerag Dujer Garden Dujer Garden, and yeah, we'll see if he can be some sort of factor for them. Another sort of a young player that they signed in midfield. Uh, Bisuma and Papasar, they're going to operate, they're going to control the midfield, they're going to be the backbone of them, playing right behind James Madison, and now you have the likes of Archie Gray from the bench, an 18-year-old, Lucas Bergvalli, uh, Bergval, who also could be an option in there, had, having a good preseason. There's a little bit of, you see, this is the team. The problem was never was Tottenham's first 11. I thought Tottenham's first 11 was actually pretty solid last season. But the way that they play, how high intensity that they play, how much energy they put in game in, game out, when you don't have the squad depths, eventually the results will start deteriorating. If you saw Tottenham last season to begin the season were brilliant. They were brilliant and they were really up there in the Premier League and they were battling, they were battling. Eventually, they slowly started going down, down, down because as you know, games went on, start more and more tension and wearing on on these players the same way that they play every single game. Eventually, the players started getting a little bit tired and 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 is the the results started to show i thought down the stretch in games you know the players looked really really tired i thought you know the sort of intensity how intense the sort of football that they played earlier in the season you didn't really see that level of intensity and that level of attacking play later on to the season because the team just looked a little bit more stale look a little bit more tired look a little bit more rough now i think you're able with the signings that they've been able to pull off in midfield um in uh in the attack you know can make them really really threatening i think defensively too they still need you know one or two more center backs just to bolster up the bench the depths in terms of center halves the depths in terms of full backs as well they need to you know the defense i think the four i think pedro boro dogi um and then romero and van de ven i think that's a good good defensive uh if he goes with the back four that's a good four uh if he plays the back four but in terms of the depths defensively, I think they could take the next level there defensively as well. Because keep in mind, it's not just the attackers that are in the midfielders that are asked to do a lot. The defense are asked to do a very lot because of how, you know, because number one, you know, they're playing at the halfway line essentially. Um, they're having to be that sort of, you know, third line of defense in terms of pressing. They're having to play really high up in terms of in midfield. 
they're being asked to do a lot and then they have to make sure to track the runners in behind and do that sort of work um so the defense is also doing a lot of work in this so it's going to be very 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 interesting to see how this makes Tottenham. i think dominic Solankai makes it a very change it up though completely for Tottenham, and i think they could push into the top for this season now the premier league overall has gotten more tougher team by team they've gotten tougher with the transfers and all that so i think it'll be tougher to reach the top for the season but i think they can seriously make a push because uh, as i said the premier league teams a lot of the premier league teams they got better right but i also believe tottenham also got better so it, it remains to be seen but i do think they can make a push to get into the top four would i predict it probably not but i think they have i think they have a chance for sure which i didn't you know entering last season i had i didn't give tottenham any chance to be any sort of, you know, I thought they would be mid-table club in that in that sort of ranks. And I thought I was impressed with how they were playing with Ange Postecoglou, especially early on this season.